In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about horror movies and shout Armadillo and Jenga a lot in our discussion of The Mary Shelley Club or The Last Girl by Goldie Moldovsky. everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire, and today we're going to discuss The Mary Shelley Club or The Last Girl by Goldie Moldowski. Standard disclaimer, if you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read or listened and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read or listen to the book. Then come back if you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that and listen up. Yeah. It's not even words anymore. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me anymore. Just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't actually think you say it anymore. It just kind of like projects from your person. That's all it is. That's all the standard Ooh. disclaimer is. That's what I'm going to do next time. I'm just going to go blah, 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 and see if anyone notices. Can you just at least have one scream of spoilers? Yes. We are full of spoilers. Spoilers. All the spoilers. You spoilers. want spoilers? We've got them. Spoilers. Spoilers everywhere. That's what I say anytime I share our episodes on Facebook. Spoilers for days I tend to do. Depending on the character limit, that, though. So that's you using Twitter. Spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers everywhere. We need, we need to have something. We need to have just like a, a gif that just says we are full of spoilers. Or something like that. Like a, Ooh. Yes. That's More what our next that. live could be called as well. Just spoilers. I like it. Cool. Oh, I feel like I need to show off my shirt to our Patreon bonus tier. Yes. It's very fitting. I'm not wearing a creepy one. I'm just wearing a movie t-shirt and it's Jurassic Park. That's fine. I'm wearing um, Tim Curry version of It. Clown. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So everyone, everyone outside of our Patreon bonus tier knows. Yes. Because it's not fair to keep all of the secrets. Just some of them. Some because of the secrets. if they join the bonus tier, they get to see all of the secrets. Yes, they and do. hear all pretty... of the secrets that are edited out. Yes. I don't know if those are secrets that get edited out or just like <laughs> embarrassments, but oh, definitely embarrassments. Definitely embarrassments. Definitely <laughs> embarrassments. So... Horror movies. This horror is, movies. Horror movies. Yes. Oh, we should probably say to everyone, check out all of our social media and grab a bingo card. Yes. Because we'll probably be mentioning a lot of horror movies and we want you to play horror movie bingo with us. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. It's a bit of fun. <sighs> so many horror movies mentioned in this book, but we're not there yet. We're not there we yet. We need there. to do. We are not there yet. We need to do some background info and some initial thoughts. My background info. Yes, please. Is funnily enough. <laughs> About horror movies. I know. Shock. I'm so shocked. Oh my gosh. I know. Never expect I know. That. I know. So, <laughs> my background info comes from an interview from Book Crushin, <laughs> Book Crush com. I assume that it's Book Crushin, you know, like, hey, I'm crushing on a book, not like crush in. I don't know what that means. Edit all this out, me. So, my background <laughs> info is from Book com. And there's an interview with the author, and she's asked, the members of the Mary and Shelley Club introduce slash watch their favorite horror films. If you were part of the Mary Shelley Club, what movie would you bring to the club? What movies would give you the creeps? So this is a fun question, and I want to know what movie you would bring as well, but first let's mm. see what Goldie will bring. She says... If it was my first night at the Mary Shelley Club and I was asked to pick the movie, I'd have to go with Scream. It is the ultimate crowd-pleaser popcorn flick. And it is such a social movie. 
In general, I love scary movies because they're the most social to me. Aside from comedies, it's fun laughing with friends. I think it's even more fun to scream with friends. Good times. <laughs> and then she answers the second question. The movie that always gives me the creeps is The Shining. That's a hard one to sit through. Oh, interesting, interesting. What movie would you bring to the Mary Shelley Club? You see, I'm more of a horror comedy person. Yeah. Um, I like paranormal horrors as well. Mm-hmm. Um, psychological is probably my third favorite. I'm gonna put them in, in an order. I'm not. I you know I've said it before. Slasher horror is not my bag. I'm not bothered by those, and I choose actively not to watch them. I'm fine with slasher horror, but I don't like the gore horror porn whatever that is like like saw i don't really care for saw no saw and the hostel movies i'm not bothered for that i've seen slasher where it's more comedy and that's i'm fine with because it's the comedy element but yeah you know just go for the sake of go um no it doesn't entertain me yeah um yeah. i'm thinking about three okay what three are you thinking of slither is the first one uh-huh i absolutely adore slither mm-hmm and every time I get hungry, all I do is like go, oh, I'm so hungry. That's, <laughs> that, that's a thing in the house. So, yeah. Good. Okay. Mm, next one. is the, the, It's a movie called The Bear. Okay. I don't know that I know this one. Um, I saw it at a sci-fi convention. Um, they had a, a movie theater set up. That just just the popcorn smell was just there. It was gorgeous, um, and it was a it, it was a communal thing. It was there with loads of friends. It was good beer, good friends, good movie, good popcorn, um, and it's it's set in like um, like a I think it's like Florida or some like state like that, um, and there is a parasite in the water. Basically, it's like Ooh. a zombie movie. It's fun. Okay. It's, it's fun. 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 Um, and that one, purely because of the connotations of having it at the the, the, the sci-fi week uh, convention, every time I watch it, I remember being there. So it's more of a... Mm. That's fun, yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. And the other one... Now, I don't know if I want to go Shaun of the Dead, or actually, Alien. Now, Alien isn't a strict horror, but it's psychological, and it can be scary, because the xenomorph is horrible and sure i i would count alien as a horror movie i mean it's it's, it's sci-fi, sci-fi but it's a sci-fi horror for me and i'm i'm tempted by alien but i can respect um goldie's decision to go with scream because it's classic yeah what about you i think i know your number one choice well because my number one choice for all horror movies all the time is Candyman. yeah um, I'm still just anxiously awaiting the the spiritual sequel to Candyman that's yes, coming that out put soon. Back, didn't it? Oh, and it did. I'm I'm just so sad about it, but I can't wait. I can't wait for it to come out. I can understand why it was done. I think it was probably a good decision to make. Yeah, but you know what's going to be good about it finally coming out? Whenever it does, is that movie theaters are going to be open again, and that's a great movie to bring everyone back because you know just horror movies are such such great movies to watch and like goldie says you know with friends it's Mm -hmm. it's great so i'm looking forward to that i think so i think i'll pick Candyman. if i go more like b horror i might go teeth because vagina dentata it's real (laughs) It's real. Um, that's a that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Mm. Uh, and you know, I kind of, um, like you said, you know, Shaun of the Dead. I, I, Is it I not think too I comedy might... though. This is what I'm struggling no, with Shaun of the Dead. Is yeah, it see, comedy? it's. I mean, it's very like spoofy. And so I was, I was going to say a horror spoof movie as well, but. It's one that I don't know if a lot of people have watched it, but you should because it's Leslie Nielsen, um, Repossessed. Oh. And it actually has Linda Blair, and it's wonderful. 
Has there ever been a horror movie that's actually genuinely scared you or stayed with you or you still enjoyed it, but you've kind of like gone, ooh. Not really any that I can name off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, I'm always creeped out by, by Candyman, which is, I think, why I like it so much. Yeah. Um, but no, I just, I just like horror movies. I'm not, I'm not afraid of them. Although I, I suppose at the time of watching any demon possessions creep me out the most. Yeah. The, I saw Wreck, which was remade um, as Quarantine. Um, but Wreck is better, the first one, even though the, the American version is scene for scene, the, the exact copy. There's something about watching it in the original Spanish that is absolutely brilliant. But I watched it when my husband was on night shift and we watched it before he started his shift. So I was in the house by myself, freaking out, refusing mm. to go in the kitchen because of the double French doors that just had no curtains to them. So I was like texting friends going, I'm scared. And they're just calling me names, which is fair. Yeah, that is yeah. fair. That is but fair. that's like possession as well. It's a very good series. It's a very, very good series, the Rec series. Do you know what I think is underrated horror movie though? 13 what? Ghosts. I love 13 Ghosts. It's amazing. But I think it's an underrated horror movie. Yeah, I feel like anything with Matthew Lillard is going to be an underrated movie. I agree. Except for, except for Scream. Except for Scream, yes. I agree. <laughs> should we actually talk about the book? We probably should. So, initial thoughts? Other than, like, how much we love horror and... Or how much I love horror and was excited for this one? I, I, I'm, my initial thoughts are, this was recommended to us by Amy McCall. Yes. Author extraordinaire of Mina and the Undead. Yes. Um... So, you know, if somebody's going to recommend something to us, we are going to check it out. It looked good. We're covering it. Um, My initial thoughts is disappointment. Not in the book. No, let's clarify. Not in the book. In the fact that I went to the bookstore because things have started to open up in the UK. I thought, mm-hmm. right, I'm going to a bookstore. I'm going to buy a book. And I went in with the explicit intention of buying The Last Girl. And Three bookstores I went in didn't have them on the shelves. Oh, and I asked no. at the desk and they didn't have them and they didn't have them any plans to have them on order. So my initial thought is disappointment that I had to go online to buy it because the shops didn't have it. And I think it mm-hmm. is a dire shame because it's a good book. It will appeal to a lot of different readers. And um, so, yeah, bookshops need to sort themselves out. Yeah, they do. I haven't gone to a bookstore to look for it, so I can't say if that's the case here. But all I love is campy horror, so I was excited for this book. Oh, god! Because it's yeah. all horror all the time, that's constantly. It. And it's yeah. it's all, it's 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 nice to think that there might be a different twist on it as well. Yes. How can they do something a little bit different? Hmm. Let us read the summary and find out. Let us read the summary and find out. Rachel is working on a report for school. Well, she's actually listening to Spotify and constantly looking at her phone as her friend Amy sends texts teasing her about a boy she likes. Settling down to work again. Like, seriously, she's going to do work this time. Rachel notices someone outside. They are as still as a statue, wearing all dark clothes, and their face seems startlingly pale. The ping of a message pulls her eyes from the figure, and when she looks back up, it's gone. But then, a noise comes from downstairs, a heavy and deliberate footstep. It can't be. She's home alone. Her mom is on a girl's night out in the city. But there it is again. Cautiously searching the house, Rachel sees a figure in the living room. They're dressed head to foot in black. Even their hands are covered. The face isn't pale. It's wearing a mask. And now there are two of them. One suddenly moves, running through the door. The other starts to move toward her. Rachel's instincts take over and she runs toward the back door. She can visualize going through it and outside. As she reaches the handle... 
she's grabbed from behind. What a good freaking setup to a book. Sorry. Sorry I shouted that, but it's totally a good setup. You can visualize it happening as a movie. And if you didn't get through Barrymore feels from it as well. You're wrong. You have no soul. (laughs) One year later. It's Sunday night and Rachel wants to go to bed. But her one and only friend Sandra Claremont has other ideas. She wants Rachel to come to a party at an abandoned house in Williamsburg. Great idea. Rachel doesn't want to go, but her mom practically pushes her out of the front door of their apartment. Outside the party house, a girl is reading a Stephen King novel. So the party may have potential after all. Sandra can't believe Felicity Chu would have the audacity to bring a book to a party. <gasps> in this in this instance, Felicity reading Stephen King. That's my that's my type of friend right there. You found your people. Yeah. Straight away inside, Rachel loses Sandra and decides to wander the halls. Upstairs, seems quiet, so she takes out her phone and looks on the Instagram of Matthew Marshall. Distracted, she bumps into the high school royal couple, Bram Wilding and Lux McRae. The encounter with Lux isn't pleasant, so Rachel goes downstairs and tries to rid her mind of it by doing something rash. She kisses the first boy she sees, which just happens to be Bram. Yikes! (laughs) Whoops! Oh my gosh. Whoops! Awkward. Bram walks away from Rachel just as Sandra returns, which is good as she would probably ask awkward questions. But really, there isn't time for those because they're going to hold a seance. Rachel, having watched Night of the Demons, thinks this is a bad idea, but Sandra drags her along. People gather around and they talk about who they might summon. Someone suggests they might contact Greta or Frank, a couple who lived in the house until Greta snapped and killed Frank with a meat cleaver. So convinced was she that Frank was a skin sack of flies she needed to free. Just think on that for a minute. Think on the skin sack of flies. Then she realizes her mistake and takes her own life. So that's terrible. Greta and Frank, that's them. R.I.P. R.I.P. The seance begins. Thuds can be heard from the attic. Thuds that are seemingly answering their questions. Then the lights go out and the buzzing of thousands of flies can be heard. And screaming! When the lights come back on, Lux is tearing out her expensive hair extensions and screaming for help to get the flies out. But... There are no flies. Rachel notices the only other person not panicking in the corner slip a speaker into his pocket. And the entire scene causes Rachel to burst out laughing. (laughs) Of course, this makes Lux blame her for the prank. She can laugh it up now because at school she is done. The next day at school, Rachel can tell there is something different in the way people are looking at her and whispering about her. Lux has obviously been true to her word. Sandra thinks what happened at the party was caused by the prankster of Manchester Prep urban legend. Rattling off a million facts about different people, gossip and rumours, Rachel finds out that the guy with the speaker from the previous night is Freddie Martinez, another one who doesn't belong in the 1% club. Later that night, while watching a horror movie to unwind and de-stress, her mom cringing, Bessa in the corner covering her eyes, Rachel finds Freddy on Twitter. He's heading to an Evil Dead 2 screening. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's one of her favourites. Maybe if she goes, she'll run into him and she can talk to him about the prank. That is not stalkish behaviour at all. Not even a little bit. It's reasonable. It's fine. It's not until the movie is about to start that Freddy comes in with a bag of popcorn in hand and sits a seat away from Rachel. He says hi and tries to talk before being shushed. Don't friggin' talk during the movie, guy. You should know better than that. After the movie, when it's the appropriate time, they talk about horror movies a little before Rachel asks about the prank. Instantly, Freddy is defensive and tries to say it was the ghost of Greta. But Rachel is having none of it. 
It's not until Freddy says there aren't any pranksters, with an S as in plural, that Rachel knows he's slipped up. <laughs> Mistake! <laughs> Rachel has third period women's literature with Thea Turner from the party. He was the one who told everyone the story of Greta. Cornering him after class, Rachel tells Thea she talked to Freddy and he told her about the group. When Thea tries to deny that Freddy would ever tell, they both know she has called his bluff and won. Womp womp. These Thea... guys are not good at having a secret club. <laughs> they are rubbish. Thea, however, won't say anything more. Later, in three-dimensional anatomy art elective, what the heck? That is a weird subject. Rachel can't stop thinking about what Freddy and Thea are trying to hide. The clear sculpture she is subconsciously rolling is, um, well, it's not suitable for class, let's just say that. So the teacher sends her to get more clear. In the supply room, Rachel bumps into Lux, who starts giving her shit about Matthew Marshall, who she saw on Rachel's phone. Lux accuses her of lusting over a dead boy. Oh. Not what she's doing. It's not what she's doing. No, it's really not. And everything goes dark for Rachel. The next thing she knows, she has a pair of scissors in her hand and is plunging them toward Lux. Before anything can happen, Rachel is stopped, and they both end up in the assistant headmaster, aka Asshead's office. Can I just interject here with how much I love that they call their assistant headmaster Asshead? Because it's perfect. Yeah. It is. I love it. I love it. Lux is screaming attempted murder, and Rachel is saying nothing. Eventually, she does admit to the prank, thinking it will show loyalty to Freddy and Thayer. As that incident didn't happen on school grounds, Asshead doesn't care. At home with her mom, Rachel tries to tell her about the monster inside her from what happened the previous year, but she can't. She can't explain it and doesn't want to admit it. Instead, her mom asks if she'd like to watch a scary movie. Oh. Oh. The next day at school, things are worse, and to make everything even more terrible, Rachel is partnered with Lux's boyfriend, Bram, on a woman in literature project. At lunch, Rachel escapes to Central Park, where Freddy buys her a hot dog. Mm. Rachel makes her case that she feels she needs their club, regardless of the fact she doesn't know what they do. Before he walks away, Freddy asks for her number. A few hours later, she receives a cryptic message with a horror movie reference and decides it means she needs to meet them where Voorhees Avenue intersects with East 28th Street. While she's waiting there, Rachel notices a white van. Thinking it could be her ride, she walks toward it when two figures jump out and throw a hood over her head. You don't walk towards a van. No. (sighs) Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Don't do it. Don't do it. Rachel yanks and kicks and screams until she can hear Freddy telling her it's okay. It seems this is part of her introduction into the club. When the hood is removed at their destination, Rachel sees Freddy and Thea, Felicity Chu and Bram Wilding. They then ask her loads of questions about horror movies, testing her preferences. Most importantly, they ask her if she knows who Mary Shelley is. Of course she does! Thea tells her more, though, about her time in Switzerland and what led to her writing Frankenstein. The Mary Shelley Club honours and carries on her legacy, for they, too, create horror stories. It's time for Rachel's initiation. She needs to tell them what she is most afraid of. Eventually, she tells them she is afraid of herself. Afraid that she might be a monster. Rachel feels that she is capable of doing bad things, like stabbing a classmate with scissors. They ask her to tell them about Matthew Marshall. Rachel confessed that Matthew attacked her in her kitchen. He was wearing a mask. He held her down. He had a knife. She fought him, and then he slipped, and the knife went into him. And he died. Womp womp. Well, 
<laughs> Welcome to the Mary Shelley Club! Yay! Yay! <laughs> the next day at school, it's a bit surreal. The club members don't acknowledge each other. Rachel still has her project with Brown to do and tells the teacher it will be on Mary Shelley. At lunch, she tries to find their social media, but it's neither non-existent, private, or there's not much there. Sandra is a font of knowledge and she's at least able to get something. Bram is a sweetie for helping her when she had a panic attack on a school trip. Felicity is weird for wearing black lipstick, even though her mom is a CEO of a cosmetics company. And Thea has a job at a movie theatre, even though his family is rich. Just then, Rachel gets a text. There's a club meeting that night at nine. Ooh. Rachel is standing under an umbrella in the rain in front of a mansion like the one from Rocky Horror Picture Show. But in the Upper East Side. Ooh, I'm quivering with... <laughs> and Tissa. Tissa. Mm, I love Rocky Horror. So <gasps> Tim Carey is in so many good movies. I know. I know. I know. So this is Bram's house. And boy, oh boy, is he rich. Is that a real Picasso on the wall over there? Because I'm pretty sure it is. Since this is Rachel's first meeting with the Mary Shelley Club, she learns that they like to start with a scary movie, and she gets to pick. Of course, this is a test, so after some internal debate, Rachel chooses classic B-movie Black Christmas. This is met with approval by the other members. After the movie, they tell Rachel a little more about the club. They see themselves as horror enthusiasts and experts in the field, which is why they have the fear test, where each member comes up with a horror scenario that they bring to life. They get to pick the target of the test, but it can't be a member of the club, and the test is over when the target screams. Afterwards, they rate it. Simple as that. Rachel has only one question. When do we start? Ooh. Ooh. Two nights later... Rachel and the club are donning clown costumes for Thayer's fear test. His target is Trevor Diggs, a boy who makes Thayer's life at school hell. And they're doing it at his own birthday party. Freddie points out in a way that this is like vigilante justice. Rachel is nervous, but Freddie tells her if she says a safe word, she can bail out. And Rachel randomly chooses armadillo <laughs> why? why 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 armadillo no one knows why i'm just gonna randomly scream armadillo throughout this entire thing though i mean i really think that you should <laughs> and then you could just pick up the summary as you can crack on you know yeah sure yeah, that's fine the party is in full swing when Felicity knocks on the door. Trevor, not recognising her despite sharing at least three classes with her, is about to send her packing when a drunk Bram stumbles past and tells them to let her in. The more the merrier! As Trevor is about to be the man and hook up with one of the girls, he spots a red balloon dog resting on a plant. But it's gone when he looks again. Trevor sees a girl in the corner with a red clown's nose on. Going over to kick her out, he realises it's the girl he tried to kill Lux with craft supplies. So she has to go. Get on out of that party, girl. Take your scissors with you. <laughs> Take your scissors with you. <laughs> when he throws her out, a birthday gram clown is waiting at the doorstep. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, thank you. And then it gets worse. Trevor can hear tinny, clownish music from upstairs. Bram offers to investigate and sends him a text to come check out this weird thing. Then he starts getting texts from Bram's phone, but those are clearly not from Bram. As he approaches his bedroom, Trevor can hear the tinny music better. It's the same music from his seventh birthday party with the clown that terrified him. Inside his bedroom, he finds Bram face down in a pool of blood, a trail of two large bloody footprints leading from his body to the closet. More texts from Bram. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Then there's a manic giggle getting louder and louder and a clown jumps from the closet. 
Trevor runs, fleeing his bedroom and down the stairs. As he stands in the middle of the party, everyone stares, and he watches as the partygoers take out their cells and photograph him wetting his pants. Wah, wah. <laughs> I didn't know who was going to get that bad. Smiling. Armadillo! <laughs> Smiling and whooping, the club is on a high that carries on at school the next day. They share secret smiles and seem to stand a bit taller as they pass each other. Sandra and Rachel's mum notice the difference. Trevor wisely stayed home from school as the rumours and gossip are rampant and overshadowing Rachel's arts and crafts killer stuff. Thank goodness. That's a rubbish <laughs> thing. It's rubbish. It's terrible. It's terrible. A couple of nights later, the club meets again, and it's a special occasion as they'll be watching Gut Stab 6, the new major Yorker addition to the horror canon, which means horror trope bingo! Yay! <laughs> Rachel wins despite the googly eye she's making at Freddy, and she wins the ultimate prize of getting popcorn dumped over her head. <gasps> yeah! Yeah? Oh, no. Don't waste popcorn. Please. And if it's the sweet kind, it means it's going to be sticky and tacky and it's going to feel awful. It's probably just buttery. It's probably just buttery popcorn. I feel like eating popcorn and licking butter off your fingers was mentioned many times throughout this book. I really wanted popcorn throughout reading this book. Like, Me too. The urge was Me strong. too. And the urge is always yeah. there. It's always simmering. But yeah, I just needed popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. This really made me want, like, movie theater popcorn, though. Not, yes. I mean, not that my popcorn that I make at home is bad at all, because it's not. It's delicious. Oh, it's just different. But, man, I need that movie theater butter. We only have sweet and savory, really, over in the UK. We don't have uh, butter. And I love buttered popcorn. That is a shame. Uh, Whenever you get to visit, we'll go to the movies and eat too much popcorn sold and i won't dump it over your head well i might just so you can have more like your mouth is open and yours ah! <laughs> yes yep doing it okay rachel throws herself into the club she is a complete devotee and lives for their next meeting it's fairly frequent two or sometimes three times a week at one meeting thayer yelps while watching us and has to suffer the consequences, stripping down to his underwear and running around the street, making as much noise as possible. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Rachel gets to know the other members somewhat. Thayer loves Gore, but is a sweetheart and helps her get a weekend job at the two-screen movie theater he works at. Felicity may be mistress of the dark, but she shares her meticulous class notes and is devoted to her dogs. Bram is always standoffish and a popular kid at school, but he's a giant horror geek and a loving big brother. Rachel spends the most time with Freddy as they hang out together outside the club and find easy company in each other. Accidentally spying on Bram, tucking his little sister into bed, Rachel blurts that she needs to use the bathroom and makes up some excuse about their women's lit report. Bram doesn't seem totally convinced, but agrees for her to come over the next day to work on their project. Eee! Sandra's going to be so excited when she finds out she's in Bram's bedroom. Oh, my God. It's a boy. <gasps> it's a boy. Clutch my paw. <laughs> the study session is a disaster. Rachel oh, and Bram no. argue over what to include. Then Bram spies her on the text to Freddy when she's questioning if Bram is even human. That's just rude. That is not very nice at all. It's it's not. In his own home. So Bram puts her down for all her relationships revolving around the Mary Shelley Club. He is being a bit of a dick and Rachel tells him just that. And then he brings up her attack. What? Yes. No, yikes, do no. Armadillo, armadillo. Armadillo, armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, 
Rachel calls him out for trying to make her feel weak, saying he doesn't know how he would react if two people broke into his house. Bram backs down and actually apologises and tells her she never mentioned a second person was there. Huh. As Rachel leaves, she bumps into Lux, because of course she would. <laughs> Later in the week, Rachel joins Felicity in the meatpacking district to get supplies for the next fear test. I've been you there. have to go to the meatpacking district. I've been there. Excellent. Excellent. I saw no meat packing. Her target? No? Did you see giant hooks? No. Not a no. sausage. But a. <laughs> Felicity's target is Sim Smith, the sophomore with the gold chains. <laughs> Embarrassingly, Felicity dated him the previous year, and he cheated on her, so now it's time for some fear test revenge. At the meatpacking district, they enter, surprisingly enough, a meatpacking house. <laughs> One of Felicity's contacts is getting her a meat hook, the style used in I Know What You Did Last Summer, and it's huge with a neon orange handle, which somewhat distracts from its frightening appearance. With her usual friendliness, or with not skeptical friendliness eyebrow, at all, <laughs> indeed, Felicity demands a menacing, sharp boning hook. It's not too much to ask, surely. Give me the rustiest hook you have. Oh, yes, with bits still on it. Mm. Sim Smith's stepdad is a used car salesman and owns a dealership. Sim likes to hook up with girls there. It's the pick of the lot. Privacy and a new car smell. It's always win-win. This he... guy is just a giant douchebag. I, I had to hold back the vom there. It was disgusting. It's He's... terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. Ugh. Armadillo! 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 Right Armadillo. I'm not using this enough. I need to knock the safe word. I know. Sorry, it's only me. I, I need to do it. This I is need it. It's terrible. I need the safe word as well. <laughs> He's even created a little makeout spot he calls Sims Point. Armadillo! Armadillo this, for sure. Because yikes. Yeah, it's not classy. It is... It is not classy at all. It's gross. Tonight, ooh, he has Jennifer Abrams tugging him towards the Jaguar. But Sim likes the 2004 Volvo. Oh yeah, I'm a Dillo. <laughs> I'm a freaking Dillo. <laughs> As they get into the car, Sim hears a thud. And a few moments later, a scratching sound on the roof. Sim tries to recapture the moment, but sees a shadowy movement and a dark flash. The shadow is coming closer. As it gets nearer, he can't tell if it's a man or a woman because they're obscured by a black coat. Jennifer screams at something on the radio and the figure is gone. The sounds start on the roof again and the metal dips with the weight of a person. Tap, tap. The shadowy figure with a metal hook taps the window. Sim kicks the door open and makes a run for it. He's close to the gate when the figure pops up again, looking bigger than before and menacing with a scarred mask covering its face. The figure pushes Sim back onto the hood of a car, but Sam kicks them hard in the ribs and, without the gate, not looking back. What an asshat. He's just left Ooh. that girl there. Yeah, he's terrible. He's she terrible. needs the armadillo And well. I just... She does. I just need to discuss the audiobook here for a moment because this was the most New York scene that anyone has ever heard in a book. It was the most New York New York has ever been. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. more New York than New York really is. Yeah. It's like somebody took the Big Apple and just shoved it in this bit and then smothered shoved it with Shoved it inside chains. of an armadillo. Shoved inside of yes. an armadillo and the armadillo has lots of gold chains. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely. <sighs> okay. Back to the summary. No more 
New Yorker armadillos wearing gold chains with apples in their mouths. Yeah. Until a little bit later, I'm sure. <laughs> the club meets the following night, and it's Felicity's turn to pick the movie. Urban legend. Ooh, good choice. The golden era of Joshua Jackson with bleached hair. While Felicity argues for a do-over, Rachel notices Bram winces when he reaches for popcorn. No matter the arguments she makes, Felicity's fear test is deemed a failure. Before storming off, Felicity tells Rachel the only reason she is in the club is because she found out too much. This is the first meeting Rachel has gone to where she doesn't really feel like she's one of them. At school, there are two very different stories circulating the halls. In one, Sim took Jennifer to some car lot in Bumblefuck, Brooklyn, and made up the story of a fish tackle serial killer because he couldn't get it up. (laughs) In the other, Sim was attacked by a big scary dude in a hoodie and a mask. Wait, what? What? A mask? There weren't any masks in Felicity's plans. The idea of a mask makes Rachel's blood run cold. Ooh. Bumblefuck Brooklyn. Home <laughs> of the chain-wearing, apple-stuffed armadillo. Mm-mm. After a terrible nightmare about her attack and spending time with Freddy to calm down and relax by watching a reel of Bride of Frankenstein... It's time for Rachel to plan her fear test. However, there is a knock on the door, and Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman comes striding in. That's the only thing you can do when you're dressed as Michelle Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Stride. Stride. Maybe strut. Maybe strut. But stride is very good. Um, City that walk. It's very rude. What? Sissy that walk, it's off RuPaul's Drag Race. Ah. Uh, mm, when they walk, yeah, you can't walk. Well, Sissy the walk. Sissy that walk. Okay. Armadillo. Armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the latex is Sandra, here to take Rachel to a Halloween party. Finding a frilly periwinkle dress, a Cincinnati Reds baseball cap, and putting her hair in braids, Rachel is dressed as PJ Souls from Carrie, and they head to the party at a warehouse in Brooklyn. Is it Bumblefuck Brooklyn? We can only hope. We can only hope that there is someone there dressed as an armadillo in chains stuffed with apples. Felicity is at the party, too, dressed as the shower scene from Psycho, complete with shower curtain, pole, and towel. Thayer is there, dressed as Chucky. As Rachel and Sandra dance, Freddy Krueger comes over. Sandra tells them to get a room when all the flirty conversation between Rachel and Freddy gets to be too much and they end up dancing instead. The night is going well until Lux appears and starts taunting Rachel about Matthew Marshall and how he was stabbed to death. Rachel wonders if Bram talked to Lux. Hmm. As she walks away, Rachel catches sight of a figure in a white mask. Rachel turns and runs, trying to find a way out before Jason steadies her in her panic. Jason asks her to dance, which she does, so as not to be alone. I mean, to be fair, you're dancing with Jason, you know? Right. I mean, and like, which Jason is it? Is it... Jason in space. I hope it's Jason in space. Jason, although it should be probably Jason takes Manhattan because we're in New York. Even though he really is only there for a few minutes because most of that movie takes place on a boat. Yeah. They're in Manhattan for like 10 minutes. I honestly can't remember. I just hope it's in space. The space one was the best. The space one. Space! Brilliant, brilliant. Anywho. <laughs> so as the song comes to an end, he leans down and tells her to leave the club. Oh, man. It's Bram. Oh, no. Mm. She leaves the warehouse. Doesn't look back. Mm. Damn it, Bram. Bloody Bram. <sighs> There's a club meeting the following night, and Bram is his usual standoffish self as he chooses their movie, Funny Games, a movie about a home invasion. 
Mm-hmm. He's an asshole. Rachel is on edge throughout, but determined not to show it because then she'd have to run streaking down the street. But she realizes it isn't the movie that makes her feel anxious. It's Bram. When Thayer and Rachel are working at the theater the next day, he asks Rachel who her target will be. She says she hasn't decided, but really, it can only be one person. Thayer encourages her, so she sends out a group text. If Bram wants to mess with her, she'll play. Lux McCrea has an easy babysitting job a couple of nights a week. Send the child to bed, no cuddling, give it half an hour, then text Bram to come over. Tonight, though, her charge Wyatt couldn't get to sleep. Ugh, so needy. Ugh. How dare a child need help to go to sleep? I know, I know. Bastard. He says... <laughs> He says he, he is tapping at the window. Lux dismisses it and helps him to bed. When she goes back to get Wyatt's dog, she notices something is off with his toys. They're not in the typical heap, but all lined up. When she goes back to Wyatt, he's asleep. Thank goodness. Bastard. Oh, honestly. So <laughs> sticky. Back in the living room, Lux starts to feel uneasy. She started to hear the tapping and the creaking noises Wyatt mentioned. Even the dog is reacting to that. Walking around the house, the tapping and scratching increases and the front door knob turns. Convinced someone is in the house, Lux texts Bram. She's scared, so she hides in a broom closet and then she hears the door opening. Lux goes to investigate. Inside the master bedroom, she finds a figure. Thinking it's Wyatt's dad, she calls out to him. But then she notices the very pale, scary mask. Lux screams, turns and runs. The figure chases her and pushes her down the stairs. Yikes. Armadillo. Armadillo, for, sh for sure. But you know, Lux, don't run upstairs. Leave. You were safe in the broom Leave. closet. You should have stayed there. Yeah. It's terrible. Lux is taken to the hospital with a broken arm and six stitches on the back of her head. Her story of the events doesn't match those planned for the fear test. At an emergency club meeting, Bram accuses Freddy of wearing the mask and hurting Lux. Freddy denies it, and the rest of the club are happy to believe him that if there was someone there, it, it was someone else. After that... The club just seems to stop, though Thayer is certain it will get back on track as they still have other fear tests to complete. In the meantime, Rachel agrees to go to the school ski trip with Sandra. When they're settled into their overcrowded lodge, Rachel receives a group text from Bram telling all the Mary Shelley club members to meet. It's his turn. Bram tells them his target is Sandra and they're going to stage a home invasion. Oh, Come on, man. I'm a fucking dillo. <laughs> All they have to do is create chaos and wear these masks. The same masks reported by the other fear test targets. The same masks worn in Rachel's own home invasion. Mm -mm. Rachel wants to quit, but Felicity, supported by the other members, blackmails her. If she walks mm. away, they tell everyone she killed a boy last year. Freddie says, just make Sandra scream and it will be over. Asses. Asses and jerks. It's really terrible. It's really terrible. These are not nice people. No, they're not. Sandra Claremont is going to have her very first hookup. You go, girl! <gasps> Woo! As she's making out with super hot Aldi, they start to hear loud noises from downstairs. Sandra tells Aldi it's just... Jenga. But if it is Jenga, his great friends would have come to get him because Jenga is his jam. Are we sure this guy's super hot if Jenga is his jam? I think it's the kind of guy who just needs to keep his mouth shut. Just sit Jenga's there and look pretty. Jam. Jenga's my jam. Jenga is no one's jam. <laughs> 
They resume their over-the-clothes fumbling when the noises start to get louder and closer. They're moving Jenga slowly up to their bedroom. <laughs> That's how you play a Jenga, isn't it? <laughs> Sexy Jenga. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, there is a dark figure in a mask standing in the doorway who dives for Aldi, and they start scrapping on the floor. Sandra, meanwhile, makes a run for it because she knows to run in horror movie situations. In the living area, all these friends are sitting on the sofa, terrified, not currently playing Jenga. <laughs> Sandra realizes there is a masked figure there. Turning, she comes face to face with the pale, scary mask. The figure hisses to Sandra to scream. Hang on a moment. What? Sandra recognizes the voice is Rachel's. When she tells her to scream again, Sandra lets out a loud cry. The masked figure disappears. Mm. To play Jenga. Jenga. Reminds me of the advert. They used to say Jenga over and over again in different ways. Jenga. 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 Um, I have not seen those, but remind me to look them up later. Oh, because uh, you know why? Because Jenga is my jam. Armadillo, armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> After the test, Rachel makes a run for it and heads to the rendezvous point. But Freddie pulls her into a closet when they hear a crash. Jenga. <laughs> when they leave, they see a hole and a skylight and a group of people gathered in the foyer. Someone says they saw someone on the roof. On the floor is Sandra's lifeless body. Oh, shit. Not Jenga. At the rendezvous point, Rachel wants to tell the police everything. Felicity wants to save her own ass and protect the club. Thea is quiet. Freddie and Bram are trying to talk reason. They agree nothing would come of telling anyone about the club. Bram's words would be more trustworthy if he didn't seem to have blood on him. Oh. Oh. Rachel gets more suspicious of Bram when, a few days later, she and Lux find themselves in the arts and crafts stockroom again. Except this time, Lux is being nice. Ooh. She drunk. She's tr she might be. She might be drunk at school. She might have just won Jenga and is celebrating. <gasps> That's why. That's why. She's trying to console Rachel over her trauma to reassure her she had no intentions of telling anyone about the dead boy, but if she needs to talk, she's there. When Rachel points out that it must be nice to have Bram to talk to, Lux tells her they broke up. <gasps> she has negative associations from the night of her attack. One minute, the masked person was in front of her. Then next, Bram with a hoodie and a mask flung off to one side. Interesting. Deciding to investigate, Rachel talks to Sin and finds out about the kick to the ribs. She starts to piece things together and takes what she knows to Freddy. They decide that they need to search Bram's house for the mask he wore the night of his fear test. The one with the blood on it that he didn't throw out. Amateurs! Really? Really? Why would you keep it? Why would you keep something that has someone else's blood on it? Either. And that person is now dead. eBay. <laughs> no one wants to buy that. A week later, at Bram's birthday party, Rachel has her chance. While the raucous after party takes place downstairs, she searches his room. Unfortunately, Bram finds her. He tells her he didn't do anything. The blood from that night is his own after Sandra knocked him out cold. He came too after she fell. Rachel doesn't believe him, but Bram insists and that if she really thought about it, she would realize the truth was in front of her all along. Matthew Marshall didn't work alone. He had someone with him. And it's them. <gasps> them. They are the ones. Not Bram. 
Oh, little old me. I'm rich. Oh. oh, oh. Let me go back to my weird party where girls are offering themselves to me. Oh, God, that party. That party. That, that party. party was an armadillo. That the Jenna. yes. Back at school, there is a memorial service for Sandra. Rachel has to make a speech before they unveil a plaque in Sandra's honour, and when the cover is lifted, silence fills the auditorium. In bright red spray paint are the names of the Mary Shelley Club members. In Ashead's office, no one admits any knowledge, but a brand later, Rachel tells them all of the second person from her home invasion, and how she thinks it's them looking for revenge. Arm a freaking dillo, man! Arm a freaking dillo! Yeah, yikes. At nearly 2 a.m. on the Upper West Side, Rachel is sneaking into Central Park. She isn't nervous, but determined. She's walking into the belly of the beast and headed straight for him. Seeing Thayer at the 81st Street entrance, they walk in together. Freddy's instructions were to meet at the open-air Delacorte Theater. The park is creepy and has Rachel on edge. And mixed with the uneasy silence from Thayer, she starts to feel uneasy. She gets a sinking feeling that Thayer can't be trusted. As they walk, Rachel asks Thayer if she knew if Sandra was into hardcore drugs. Her autopsy report says that she had LSD in her system and was tripping on the roof. How does he know she was tripping? He was on the roof with her! No, he didn't push her, but she needs to understand this game is bigger than them. They aren't the only ones playing. Thayer tells her this just before a masked figure appears and plunges a knife into his back. Shit. Armadillo. Pulling the knife from Thayer's back, the figure turns on Rachel. She runs and finds a nice heavy rock and swings it at her assailant, causing them to collapse. Rachel knows she should go for help, but she approaches the masked figure. Pulling the hood away... She sees, drum roll please, Felicity! <gasps> oh. Taking off fast, Rachel heads towards the Delacorte and Freddy, who's waiting for her. She tells him Felicity is the masked figure and she stabbed Thea. Freddy asks if she's scared. Yes, of course! Good. Wait, what? Excuse Freddy me? Armadillo? pulls out his Armadillo? own white mask and puts it on. He tells her the test is almost finished. She just needs to scream. Okay, question. Uh, question. Yes. If she screamed, would it be over? Good question. Let's take that to the discussion. Mm. Instead, Rachel tries to run, but Freddie has already grabbed her. Rachel cries out that a member of the club can't be the target, but... She's probationary at best. <laughs> Ooh. Burn. Burn. Really, she was never a member, but always a target. Oh. Ah, jerks, man. They were all slowly twisting the knife, and if you looked closely at the mask, you could see under the white paint a face of Frankenstein. Freddy confessed to having drugged Sandra, though she wasn't supposed to die, only to get spooked. Thayer started getting cold feet, so he had to be silenced, and who better to do that than rule follower Felicity? Rachel tries to use the safe word, armadillo, but Freddy can't let her go. I'm so glad that she tried to use the safe word. I'm so glad that she tried it. That's breaking the rules, though. We can't, we can't end here. Kneeing Freddy in the groin so hard he drops the knife, Rachel grabs it and turns it on him, slicing the bridge of his nose before taking off for the trees. In the trees, Rachel finds Bram, who says he's on her side. I mean, trust issues here. I've got major trust mm. issues. Yeah. 
Freddy catches up and shouts that Bram has been in on it all. Bram is going to tell her everything, but then Freddy tackles her and she sees the knife hurtling towards her, but she isn't struck. Thank goodness. Bram is. Oh, damn. In the chest. Oh, no, it's worse. Armadillo. Armadillo. But armadillo doesn't work, man. <gasps> we just learned that. Dang it! Freddie leans in, bragging to Rachel that when the police arrive, he's going to tell them that she's been spooked by what happened last year. She was convinced she was being followed, that it was Bram, and that he tried to save her. But alas, he was too late. Oh, man. It's easy to lie about self-defence, isn't it? Before Freddie can use the knife on Rachel, Bram rises up and stabs him in the back. Oh. Rachel wakes in her bed from a nightmare. Her mom is with her. She asks Rachel what happened. The police found all the pieces scattered across Central Park. Freddy, dead, with the rubber mask still on. Bram and Thayer, alive. And Felicity, gone. Rachel was the only one not dead or wounded, which is suspicious. But... There's always one left standing in any great horror story. But this story feels unfinished. Rachel goes to visit Bram after his surgery. She has to know if he was really in on it with Freddy. He was, but didn't think it would go this far. They didn't believe he could pull it off, but he had her hooked and Thea thought she would beat Freddy at his own game. Neither of them wanted to keep going or go so far. Bram tells her Freddy's plan was that they had to weave the masks in any chance they could because he thought it would trigger her from the break-in. Bram spooked Sin. Freddy pushed Lux and painted their names on Sandra's plaque. Freddy poisoned the club and Bram was fighting him all the way. Mm. Rachel shouts that that it's only a game. But Bram tells her it's more. There are chapters of the club all over the country. Matthew Marshall was a member of the club in Long Island. Her break-in was Matthew's for your test. And Freddy chose her in revenge. After Bram falls asleep, Rachel leaves the hospital. She's no longer scared. She played the game and came out the other side, no longer afraid. She feels empowered. No fear. No mask. Or, in the style of Clue, as Rachel walks away from the hospital, something is bothering her. There were two people in the house that night. Who was the other person? Was the rest of the Mary Shelley Club there, watching? Is someone watching her now? It feels that way. Ooh. 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 Armadillo! Armadillo! (laughs) Armadillo! Armadillo! Yeah, so those were two different endings because you remember we said at the top of the show that this is the Mary Shelley Club or the Last Girl. Two different titles with two different endings. You get them both. Woohoo! One, she leaves and it's fine. And the second. Sets up for a sequel. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Right, well, I'm going to armadillo now. I'm going to just bail out armadillo. Okay. For about 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Yeah, I think that sounds good. I think that sounds like a good plan. (laughs) Everyone, check out this other podcast. Hi, this is Leah Stuhler, creator and host of YA Book Chat Podcast. If you love reading young adult books and chatting about them with your friends, then head on over to my podcast and take a listen. Each episode, my guest and I chat about a different YA book. We start spoiler free and then head into our spoiler section where we dive into the mysteries of each book and we do it with laughs and fun along the way. You can listen to YA Book Chat on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your your podcast and now back to the show how much
much fun was this book? It was. It was just the horror movie delight that you expected, like holy pop culture reference Batman, like all over. It really, really was. It really was. I have a list of all the movies mentioned, even the ones that are not horror. Yes. There's so many. There's so many in the list, and it's fantastic because really, like, what every other paragraph they were talking about a horror movie. I liked it when it was the guess the movie kind of um, references. So, like, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Yes, you know it's Batman, but you know which Batman. You know, mm, it's, right. th- those ones were quite fun to try and catch. Do you know, do you know what I didn't like? Gut stab. That's not real. I forgot to check that. I was wondering, I is Gut Stab 6 an actual movie? Because I've I never heard of find, any Gut Stab. I couldn't find anything called Gut Stab. That's, that's, that's upsetting. Yeah. But I guess because in this one, you know, she was making fun of it. So she probably didn't want to make fun of a real movie. You know, because all the other ones are like great movies and she mentions how great they are. So maybe that's why. But I couldn't find anything called Gut Stab. No. No. It sounds great, and I would like to watch Gut Stab. I want to watch it as long as it's not, as you know, we talked at the the, the, the the top of the episode, a slasher for the sake of slasher. If it's a horror slasher, I'm all over it. I want. I would like a horror slasher. Not gore. No, not gore. Not not that. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't like no. that. <sighs> Can you recall? All of the movies listed, and which one is your favorite from the ones that they mentioned? I, okay, you sent me the list. It's on my phone, which is somewhere in this room. Uh huh. So I can't cheat. And I can't... they did mention Jason Takes Manhattan, <laughs> which did we they did talk about. The space one, no. Um, I feel like they mentioned Alien. So that counts. That's all right. But they did not mention Jason Goes to Space or whatever it's called. Jason X? I can't remember. Jason Goes to Space? I remember there was Jason versus Freddy. Jason floats menacingly through space. Was there a Jason versus Freddy in space as well? Yes. Not in space. No. It was just Freddy versus Jason. That was terrible. It was when Freddy Krueger played crotch pinball with Jason Voorhees. Yeah, that was not good. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't play crotch pinball. Don't play Jenga. Do play Jenga. Do you play Jenga because Jenga is our jam. Jenga is our jam. <laughs> oh, but so many, so many. Um, what about what about the '90s horror movies? Okay, so the ones they that... mentioned Scream and I know what you did last summer and Urban Legend, and those are like the three main ones. Which one's your favorite? Um, out of those ones. It's a toss-up between Urban Legend and Scream. I've seen Scream more, but I think Urban Legend is a better movie. But Scream has lots Scream. of sequels. Yeah, just because and they're it's... all pretty good. Yeah, but just because it's sequels doesn't mean it has to be good. I have never seen the um, series. The TV series is even good, even though they joke about it in the book, which they do. I enjoyed the TV series. It was fun. I think Rachel is a bit of a bit of bit of a horror f- um, purist in those terms. Like I think so. I think she is. I think she's a little snobbish with her horror movies. Yeah. No, I don't. It, it, that's difficult because I don't know if I I, I. I. I love Urban Legend, but I do love Scream. Scream is a much more accessible movie. I'm more likely to put that on in the background than I am Urban Legend. Mm-hmm. So, and I have seen Scream more than I've seen Urban Legends. Probably Scream. Is it Robert for you? It's really hard to say. I love all of them. It depends what frame of mind you're in, isn't it, really? Like, what, or, like just how you're feeling, really, with horror. Because sometimes you, you want the, 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 the truly terrifying. Sometimes you want the funny. Sometimes you want the, the 90s. Sometimes it's difficult. Yeah. I think, I guess, probably Scream, even though I really, really, really enjoy Urban Legend. And I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Now, I still know what you did last summer is okay. And then I'll always know what you did last summer or whatever. The third one that was straight to video was garbage. Yeah. Yeah, let's not talk about it. No. 
No. Yikes. The the ones that stood out for me probably were Slither. Yeah. Um, Shaun of the Dead. Yes, I'm glad that those were mentioned. Yes. Um, Dear of the Dead. Rocky Horror Picture Show, though it's not really a horror, even though you know, it's got the word horror in it. Is it a horror? I mean, it could I, be. I would not consider it a horror, me no. personally, but probably if, some people find it scary. If you're on the spectrum of horror, it's probably dangling off the edge. Yeah, it's probably hanging out with, like, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Black Christmas. Now, I can't remember seeing the original, but I have seen a remake that was, um, I've seen a remake. Um, <laughs> Well, you would be judged for not having seen the original. I can't. I might have. I by honestly, this group. Do, do you know what? Honestly, I cannot remember a lot of movies I've ever seen. The t- thing is, there's some, there's, some mo- there's some horror movies where I have seen them in part, but not the full thing. Mm. I've seen The Hall of Carrie, but I've not seen it all in one sitting. Things, things like that. Yeah. I saw Chucky at too young an age, I'll tell you that much. I saw Chucky at a very young age. <laughs> I'm upset that they mentioned Carrie, but not the Rage Carrie 2, because I love that one so much. Yeah, the, the second one is great. Especially the ending. I used to just watch the ending over and over and over again because it was so creepy. <laughs> Yeah. So, anyway, that's my favorite part of this whole book is all of the horror movies mentioned. Like, they're very yeah. good, sometimes rare, sometimes not often heard of, but of course I've heard of them and seen them all. So, and it was a stiff, it was a full spectrum as well. That's what I quite enjoyed. You, you, you like the more hard, hardcore horror as well. And I'm that, uh, you, you know, we would, we would, we, we, I would like if the horror is on a different on different scales, but I could get a lot of the references if I haven't actually seen the movie. I know what the references were in the most part as well, so yeah. it made it accessible. And I think when we consider the the demographic of this book, the the key demographic is you know YA, it's teens. Is there a chance that a sixteen year old has seen all of these movies or heard of all of these movies? Probably not. Probably not, but it could inspire a horror movie lover to go back and watch some of these because there were a lot of recent ones mentioned, like Us and Get Out and, like, and, you know, Scream the TV series. Well, they maybe you didn't. Hereditary as well, do I remember that? Yeah, Hereditary was on there too. Like, you know, maybe, maybe um, a kid who's reading this book will have seen some of these newer things and will think, oh man, I wish that I was in the horror, the Mary Shelley Club so I could watch horror movies too. And then they'll go back and watch some of these old ones and, you know. Exactly. A brand new baby horror fan is created. Exactly, exactly. It's it's always good when you read something like this and different books do this for different things and you just get this, you come away thinking, I've enjoyed a book, but I've also come away with a ton of things i can now look into and delve into separately and enjoy yeah. it was kind of the same with uh mina and the undead except it was more revisiting stuff from the 90s and going right okay i finished mina and the undead that's inspired me to go back and watch bram stoker's dracula and yeah. you know just interview with the interview vampire, with the vampire and buffy and yes all of them exactly and think you know what I've, it's been too long since i've watched them so for for us Having read it, it's probably gone, I haven't seen Urban Legend in years and I love that movie. I'm going to go and watch it now. Um, yeah. Whereas, yes, you're right, as somebody who's a younger reader, there's a very, very good chance they haven't accessed a lot of these horror movies, but it's kind of giving them a list and saying, right, if you want to be part of the Mary Shelley Club, the good side, not the bad side. Not the murder side. Not the murder side, not the side of ter- that terrorises people. Here's a list of horror movies yeah. that is going to give you a bit of everything, a taste of everything, a mousse en bouche of horror. Yes. Um, it, this really made me, like, miss the days uh, 
several, several years ago, we used to have like a B horror movie club and every weekend my group of friends would get together and we would bring a different B horror movie to watch and like cook dinner inspired by the movie or, you know, just eat pizzas, whatever. But it was so much fun to sit and watch B horror movies and just laugh at them yeah. with friends. So like what Goldie said in her interview, like it's fun to laugh and scream with friends. Exactly. Horror is communal. It really is. It really is. It's, it's... I wish that we could have a horror movie club. Yeah. Yeah. But we're pretty much limited to what's on Netflix. Yeah. And sometimes it's good, but sometimes they don't match up. No. Being in different countries. Yeah. It's a shame. It's, it's a shame. Yeah. One day. One day. Our one day, every time we say that, is like 400 days now. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's kind of extensive. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we, we have a lot of things planned. I guess you should just move here. I've told you once, I'll tell you again. I like my NHS. That's true. You just have to come over here. <sighs> yeah, that's fine. One day. Right down much cheaper over here i'm sure maybe but not not in arkansas i don't think mm. arkansas is very cheap okay i'll let you know we will be back there eventually anyway probably edit all that out me <laughs> edit everything um, out. edit everything out so yeah i was i just i just wish that we could have a horror movie club it would be so much fun yeah i'm i love going to the like the i love going to the cinema to see these things and there's there is a cinema that's quite local um but it's an old style cinema where they've got a classic screen and it looks like um like a theater like a like mm-hmm. a stage theater and it's got the curtains and everything they do have more modern screens as well but quite often they would do um overnighters Ooh, themed overnighters so i've been to a couple of them um and the last one i went to was a sci-fi one which was brilliant you know ghostbusters at two o'clock in the morning followed by weird science that's is just the best perfect yeah it was that's absolutely perfect. perfect oh and back to the future was on as well it was great excellent and they usually have a choice of um two to three movies as well so you can pick and choose what you want to go on everything starts at the same time so you know you can go in and out it's great um and usually in october they do the horror fests as well they have the all night of the horrors and it's great. I mean, the amount of prep you have to do, you have to make sure you get good, 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 good sleeps in beforehand. Yeah. And the amount of coffee you end up drinking that night is spectacular. But it's proper popcorn as well, and it's just delightful, and it's communal because you're in this building with a couple of hundred people at the time, but everybody is there for one reason: to watch good movie so even though you're with a group of friends you start chatting to other people in other groups and you know you, you come out of um seeing back to the future and then you start talking about other time travel movies and which leads on to other conversation about other movies and it's the same with like even if it was horror genre it's that communal experience and that conversation that starts up and horror is one of these great genres where it has a huge spectrum so mm-hmm. if you don't like the gore if you don't like too much psychological there are ones where it just kind of dips its toe in and i think actually the last girl slash the mary shelley club is one of those where it isn't even though it's about horror books even though there's these at least three fear test four fear test scenes they're not overly scary i mean we giggled our way through the sim smith one um that one was just terrible though <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know if you agree with that. It just or not that it isn't. It's like horror light. But yeah. since horror light, it's like it's it's making it accessible, and I like that because it, it it gives you that whole list of things to try out. But it's an accessible book where if you're not into horror, you're not going to get the the spooks. It's no Dawn Kerrigan or Cat Ellis. Right. Yeah. It's. I like your your term horror light. I think that's a good descriptor mm-hmm. for the kind of horror this is. Like it's most of the stuff is pretty not terrible, except for the fact that there was a murder in the very beginning, and like then her friend dies at the end. That's pretty terrible, but the rest of it is just 
pranks. Yes. I got Fear Street Point Horror style vibes from this. Serious, yes. Serious yes. vibes, especially after Did... reading The New Year's Party. Yes. Did you think that they were going to put a body behind the furnace? I'm disappointed that they didn't put a body behind the furnace. <laughs> and I'm disappointed that ghosts from the 1960s didn't turn up either. Mm. Greta and Frank let me down. Yeah, they could have showed up and they could have they could have changed the entire game. They could have solved a lot of problems. They could have. Or they could have been murdered and shoved behind a furnace. <sighs> only to disappear five minutes later we can only hope this is happens and this is what happens in the, the sequel yes yes there's got to be ghosts from the 60s who died in a violent car crash you see this is the thing if if there was a sequel done and it but i think both of them in different ways do set up for a sequel um the u.s mary shelley club version a lot more explicitly yeah I would like other genres of horror to be, um, like, dipped into a little bit more. Like the seance with the paranormal or the like demonic kind of area. It was one tiny little scene, and I would kind yeah. of like a bit more of that, a bit more delving into it because it was it was kind of key on the psychological horror, which is understandable because that was identified as Rachel's favorite. Right. Yeah. But again, each fear test was atmospherically different. I don't know how I feel about the home invasions, because there were multiple home invasions. There was a lot. There was a lot. Yeah, I think I would have liked a slight variation on on that. But I can understand it was the over, uh, you know the overarching theme is that Rachel had the home invasion, so it's the easiest way for Freddy to delve it into and put it in. Yeah, so I wonder if they, if this wasn't a whole entire setup to get back at Rachel, which seems over the top. It's extravagant. That's something, that's something that I didn't really like about the book. And even, or I guess maybe I'm kind of surprised by it, was that there wasn't more to the reveal at the end with Freddy getting back at Rachel for killing that guy like was Freddy the other guy in the house was he someone outside watching was he a part of that group or I mean like did he just read about this story online and was like hey this girl goes to my school now so now I'm going to get back at her for whatever reason like what was the deal why was he so focused on getting revenge on her? That's my question. I, I had that question after listening to the Mary Shelley Club. And I thought, this is playing on my mind. Is Freddie the other person? I was convinced Freddie was the other person or at least another member of the Long Island uh, Mary Shelley Club. But yeah. when I read it through, obviously you read it a bit slower. Um, I was looking for these things. And Freddie was not a member of the Long Island Club as far as it's not revealed that he was. Because mm-hmm. when they're talking about how long they've been in the club, Bram and Freddie have been in there and were, were established as being the longest serving members of Manchester Prep Club. Right. And yes. Bram says, Freddie takes the game, well, he takes the fear test too seriously. Right. So he's obviously heard about what's happened on Long Island and wants to get revenge against the target. Now, I'm sorry, this is not right. You enter those for your tests, knowing full well you are going to tr- go. You're going in there to terrorize someone, and you mm-hmm. want to make them scream. Rachel does not scream, which is what I really liked about it. She is not a screamer. She reacts. She fights back, or she runs away. Love yeah, or that. she laughs. Or she, she laughs. laughs. I adored that. Yeah. Which is the same as Sandra. Sandra's like, what the hell's going on here? And she isn't a screamer until she's told to scream. Right. Um, and I just think it's a bit, ex- it's just a bit too much for me that Freddie is doing this out of some kind of like frat devotion to the Mary Shelley Club when you go, when you know anything could happen. 
it's not scripted. It's planned, but it's not scripted. Right. So, okay, she, she, she fought the person who came into her house to terrorise her, who came after her with a knife. They wrestled, she got the knife, he died. Yeah. That's, that's horrible, but... It's, it's expected. Tough. Like, do you want... Did you want her to die? Would they have left if they made her scream? You know, it's hard to say. Exactly. Would she, say it's the same as the question you you were posing as we were reading the summary. If she screamed in Central Park at the end, rather than saying armadillo, would Freddie have stopped the free test? I don't think so. He was out for her death. That was yeah, his ultimate goal. Which that really, really makes me think that he had some ties to these other people. Like yeah. he's related somehow or Matthew was his friend or something. There's got to be something tying him to that other group. Yeah. Because there's no reason for him to go so batshit about getting revenge on her. There's no reason. No. Unless he's just obsessed he's with looking for an excuse. horror movie club. Like, it's... Something's missing, and I feel like whatever this something is, is supposed to be there, and we're supposed to be thinking these things, and it will be revealed in a sequel. Yes, when Felicity comes back because she disappeared. Right, Felicity disappeared. She which also makes off. me think, ooh, yeah, Felicity made me really mad, although I really liked her because she read Stephen King and had a crush on Stephen King. <laughs> and a lot of things about Stephen King but it you know it makes me wonder like the first person what if it was Felicity what if Felicity was in the house with them in Rachel's fear test because that person bolted and you know what Felicity did at the end bolted yeah she runs away she does she is uh she scarfers like it's when they haven't watching urban legend and she runs off because you can't take the fact that fear test didn't work. Yeah, so That's I don't know. Bumble for Brooklyn doing a stupid fear test job. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Just her entire attitude. I hate rules lawyers. I hate it. It takes the fun out of things when somebody is literally, if you do not perf- perfectly dot that I, the down your throat, and it's like, calm down. Just calm down. Yeah. I'll follow the rules, but I don't need to be lectured like that. She yeah. she annoyed me. She really, really annoyed me throughout. I was, ugh. And do you know who's an undersung hero of this book? Who? Rachel's mom, who was never named. We just know it's Rachel's mom. Because Miss she'll, Chavez. <laughs> she'll just sit and watch a horror movie behind, like, cowering in the corner because that's what her daughter needs and wants yeah. to make sure that her daughter's yeah, she's fine. she's a good mom. Yeah. She's a good mom. Yeah. And even though she doesn't love watching horror movies, she's like, oh, you've had a bad day. Do you want to watch a horror movie? Do you want to And watch she, a you know, movie? she's secretly hoping it'll be something like Scream, some 90s yeah. horror, so it's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because her mom is secretly a, 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 a Lillard fan. She, she can, she can, she can, yes. Yeah. She's got a poster of him in her closet. Oh, yeah. Behind the door. Yeah, or like tucked behind the clothes, so you have to move the clothes to see it. Yeah, makes a Matthew Lillard poster. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fine. Yeah? No judgment? Yeah. No. No. No, it's everything about that is normal. It does not make me want to say armadillo. Jenga. (laughs) Jenga. Bloody Jenga. <laughs> Bloody Jenga, man. I do love Jenga. I wish I, I had it. I've got garden Maybe I Jenga. do have it. I've got Jenga garden for Jenga. the garden. Nice. So the, the, the bigger blocks. Yeah. Um, I played, or made and played garbage Jenga with teens at the library. We used the boxes that 12 packs of soda come in. So that way, you know, when when it inevitably collapses, you won't get hurt because it's just empty cardboard. 
but they were pretty big and they made they made a good made a good jenga nice we used to and the a- fact that we called it garbage jenga was Even a lot of fun yeah for, for some reason an office i used to work at for ra- randomly turned up one day was a giant jenga but there were f- like foam bricks no oh, yeah that's fun yeah and a giant connect four i mean it was huge good yeah don't know why they were there they were there i like but... giant versions of things and tiny versions of things yes extremes yes 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 um do we have anything else that we need to talk about um basically... which fear test was your favorite oh um Probably the clown one. The clown one was pretty good. Trevor Diggs. Was. Probably because it was the only one that was pulled off effectively as well. Uh, the first one was too, with the flies. That was fun. More or less. More yeah. or less. That was fun. I think it could have, I don't know. I think it could have been better. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Lux ripped out her hair extensions. Was Lux the target of that one? No, it was just a general one. It was classified as a warm-up. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's right. What was your favourite for your test? I mean, I liked the flies one. I did. Um, Because I liked Thayer's storytelling. Yes. That he did. It was really great. He had a great setup. Um, One of my favourite quotes... Me too. One of my favorite quotes comes from that scene, but we're not at that point yet, so I'll save it. But one of my favorite quotes comes from Thayer storytelling. Um, so I, yeah, I really liked that one. I also I liked the guy peeing his pants because of the clown. That was pretty terrible, and I think that's probably going to be my cosplay this week. Not having pee pants, but possibly being a clown. Could be a clown with pee pants. Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did not like the urban legend roof of the car car dealership one that one was terrible that one was funny I... it was bad it was so bad it was just nasty dude. yeah yeah that guy was such a douche i mean i'm not saying that it was like poorly written or anything that was just a terrible scene and everything about it was awful but like in the best way but also in the most but that's awful it way. was annoying that you actually got away it's like no you need to scream guy because um yeah, yeah come on yeah come on man yeah <laughs> that guy should have peed his pants Yes. I would have been pleased if he peed his pants. Yes. Can that be the new goal of the Mary Shelley Club? Instead of screaming, you have to make people wet their pants. Yeah. It takes it up a notch. It makes it more difficult. Because oh, yeah. I believe, as we have talked about before, it's hard to purposefully pee your pants. We have definitely mentioned this on multiple <laughs> occasions. Definitely. Definitely. So, it's like you can imagine like one person's, like, right, your task and this fear test is to make sure they drink this whole pint of water. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's fill the bad boy up before we start the scares. Keep drinking! Oh! oh. <laughs> and then there's always a line at the bathroom. Yes. Just lock the door. Lock yeah, the door that's, from the inside. That's another part of it. Yeah. Yep, get Someone out the has. Right, someone has to lock themselves in the bathroom and then escape and then come back and give the target more water. Yes, keep topping it up. Yeah. Or if they're drinking beer, let them go to the toilet once because once the beer floodgates are open, then they're just going to be going all the time. Right, right. Any alcohol, let them pee one time and then they'll be peeing for the whole rest of the night. Sorted. So they'll pee their pants. Okay, so at least we've got done. that. We've got that done. We just need yes, to work out the rest. We're creating our own Mary Shelley Club, yeah. in which people have to pee their pants. Goals. Yes. Very target driven. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> it's what time. Great, what a it's great time. club! <laughs> yes, it's time. It is definitely time for would you rather <laughs> oh dear me armadillo 
You're not allowed to shout armadillo to get out of these questions. Not allowed. Password okay. is the Fine. button in the Would You Rather game. Well, it didn't work anyway, so whatever. That's true. But we're not ass hats like Freddy. That's out, true. Out for weed revenge. Ass heads. Ass heads. That was such a good was such a good title. I loved it. Okay. It's oh, Would You Rather time. Okay. Ready, go. We asked on social media, if you were alone in the dark, would you rather encounter a creepy clown or a creepy kid? On Facebook, 11% said clown, 89% said kid. On Instagram, 16% said clown, 84% said kid. On Twitter, 40% clown, 60% kid. And TikTok, 18% clown, 82% kid. Wow. People do not like clowns. People do not like clowns. They do not like clowns. What are some of our comments? <laughs> Paperback Diaries on Instagram said, Creepy cl- kid. At least the kid is small enough to punt across the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's most of the comments, right? Yeah. This yeah. is a theme. <laughs> Danae Tash on Instagram said, Kid, you couldn't pay me enough for the clown. <laughs> <laughs> Our sketch on Instagram said, Kid, because I don't think having a fear of clowns would help if I was a- in the room with a clown. <laughs> no, Sorry, no, no. Our sketch. You have to be in a room with a clown. Yeah. Lots of clowns. And then you have to pee your pants. And they all come out of the clown car and don't really hear the squeak go- <laughs> Yes. Squeak, squeak. Yes. Crinolin Lafroy on Instagram said clown because if we're being honest we find all children creepy <laughs> sticky little buggers <laughs> I'm with you Crinolin Lafroy <laughs> I'm a parent and I agree <laughs> <laughs> oh and then on Facebook Annie her alter ego says clowns are way less creepy than kids Bree Tart on Instagram said, Creepy child. At least children can be cute. Mostly. (laughs) God, Constance. I forgot. I forgot that we challenged Constance to only answer in song quotes. Armadillo. 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 Armadillo the song quotes. Constance Dittman on Instagram says, but I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. Hard to say which answer she's going for with that one because they were both creepy, but just kudos on the song choice. It was really weird. I just literally um, messaged Kat Ellis the exact same song lyrics and then they suddenly appeared on the fictional hangover feed and I was like, that's Whoa! eerie. That's eerie. Creepy, and you've never heard it so that song so creepy until it's played on a piccolo armadillo. A piccolo ukulele, sorry. A piccolo armadillo. A piccolo armadillo is my until... new favorite thing. There you go. You can have that on a t-shirt as well. Thank you. Piccolo I will. Ukulele. Playing creep. I bet it's creepy. Weird. I bet it's creepy. I mean, I love Radiohead though, so mm. I will just I will just say that's a good song choice. It is an excellent song choice. Coral on Facebook said, both are really scary. I think I would have to go with the kid. Mm. Colin on Facebook says, creepy kid. They're smaller and so easier to see off with a solid kick. Just punt the creepy little bastard in the head and run the fuck away. (laughs) So Colin is teaming up with paperback diaries and they're punting the children. Yes. It's good. Yes. And KC on Facebook said, Kid, clowns are terrifying, and I feel like I could definitely yeet a kid out of my way if I had to. <laughs> love the term yeet. <laughs> She's love... joining the punting group as well. She is, she is. And so are both of the comments from from TikTok. And I feel like, can I please read both of the comments yes, from TikTok? Yes, please, okay. please. So... Johnny Joe Star 69 on TikTok said, I have and will beat up children easily. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for admitting it. (laughs) Yeah. And the socialite cuz on TikTok said, creepy kid, I'll beat the fuck out of it. 
<laughs> so I'm glad we're all just okay with beating up children. Nobody's beating up the clown, though, have you noticed? Because they're all Nobody... fucking terrified of right. the clown. No- Nobody's beating up the clown. I mean, man, I would pick the clown. Because, do you know, like, all of the creepy kids in horror movies, like, they're demonic or possessed in some way. Or they have mystical powers or they're ghosts. Or something is terrible about the creepy kid. Whereas the clowns, sometimes they're, you know... They've got magical powers, but sometimes they're just people dressed as clowns. So I'm going to take my chances with with the possible human villain that is a clown. Are the clowns just misunderstood? They could be. Mm. I couldn't you help. Know, maybe, maybe they wanted to learn how to juggle and they couldn't. And they're really upset about it. But the balloon animals are excellent. But they're just sick of blowing up the bubbles. The balloons all the right. time. Yeah, maybe they have a latex allergy. Oh, that's why the red around the mouth, it's not paint. Right. It's the latex no, allergy. It's latex allergies. Yes. And they're sad about it. Exactly. And if one more kid asks for one more bloody balloon sword, that balloon sword's going to go where the sun don't shine. Yeah, it is. So I'm fighting the clown. Or being approached in the dark by a clown, I believe, is the actual answer to that question. I mean, to be fair, they might just be asking for directions. They could be. But a kid you know. at two o'clock in the morning, out in the dark, serious questions. Right. It's like uh, Men in Black. <laughs> the kid the kid reading the theoretical physics textbooks in the middle of the alley full of monsters, yes. or aliens in that case, is clearly up to something. Mm-hmm. You can't trust them. No, no. No, kids are suspicious. Yeah. And sticky. Yeah. So are you also being approached by the clown? I think so, because for ve- for very similar reasons to you, actually. Because if it's a kid, there's something fucked up with it. Like, seriously right. messed up. Right. And I can't just... Right. Like, even if you run away, there's a very good chance that kid's just going to go, oh, hello. Right. Or crawl through the TV. Right. Something's going on with that kid. And generally speaking, the clowns aren't after the adults. The clowns are after the kids. And we're not children, as much Um, as we act like children. Well, there's a difference between age and maturity level. Right. And the clowns don't kind of, like, go for... you know, they'll check your driver's license. They will. See that there's a 19 on there and go, oh, you're out of my oh, demographic. Yeah. Mm, yeah, get out of here. No. Get out no. of here. I do not get commission for you. No. So probably the clown. I can imagine, you know, you take the clown's nose off or something or de-wig it. It's like it loses its power and shrivels up like the Wicked Witch of the West or something. Right. Yeah. You know, just, it's like, it's like it. You know, you're not afraid of it. You hit it with a slingshot stone and... Then you have sex with all your friends in the sewer, and then you get out, and it's fine. Well, that sounds like a good Friday night to me. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) And there's a very good chance that the clown is either a scars guard, which, frankly, that family has very good genes, not opposed to it. Yes, right. Or Tim Curry. Or it's Tim Curry. And And it's Tim freaking Mm. Curry. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing no problem here. So I'm no. with you. I'd rather meet the clown. I might, you never know. You might make your new, ne- your new next best friend. You might. You might. Excellent. Excellent choices. <laughs> we think about these would you rathers quite extens- extensively. We really do. And the best part is, is that we think about it on the fly. So none of it makes any sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Words. Blah. <laughs> All right, next question. Would you rather be in a psychological horror movie, a paranormal horror movie, a slasher film, or a monster movie? Mm. Mm. Paranormal. Okay, why? Because I feel like there's a lot of tools already you can kind of think to. I've seen Supernatural, you know. I'll come armed with the salt. I feel like there's, you know, there's ways and means to 
protect and or fight. Okay. With psychological, you know, that's gonna, that that's going to mess you up. I love watching the psychological, but it's mm-hmm. going to if I'm like going to have it happen to me, I don't want to be that messed up. No. I do not want to be in a slasher. I do not like slashers. Do don't not interested in them. Monster movie could be good though because vampires. Right, it could be a vampire. So. Yeah. I'm gonna say paranormal with the caveat that if the monster's a vampire, then I'm just gonna like you know. Hello. Right, I think that goes without saying. If Thank there's you. vampires involved, we will be there. Thank you. Right. Okay, I am gonna pick a slasher. Oh. Because I know all the rules to horror movies, and the the rules that they taught us in Scream, you know. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow the rules of the horror movie and escape. I'm never going to run upstairs. I'm not going to get drunk at the party. Like, I'm just I'm going to walk out the front door when shit starts going down. Be like little losers. I'm out. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Peace. I'm leaving. But they always have you know they always have the rules. Yeah. So I will never say I'll be right back. No, never, ever, ever. Because you won't be. Not doing it, so. Yeah. So, I'm picking If you ever go to a cabin in the woods, I insist, I insist you take a microphone. It doesn't have to work. Just Mm -hmm. when you nope out of there, you can just drop the mic and go. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. It's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good. Next question. Would you rather be pranked with the buzzing flies... Pee pants clown, par- or parked car with the fish hook. Okay. So it's the seance, Sim, Sam, Smith, Sim Smith, or Trevor Diggs. Not based on the fact that our horror club forces people to pee their pants. I think I'm going to go with the pee pants clown because it had the best setup. I can just imagine being there and seeing it and like you know he's already really drunk bram's been feeding him vodka the whole night so bram is also in our club apparently because he's wanting him to pee his pants so he's already drunk and like can you just imagine looking over and seeing out of the corner of your eye like a balloon animal and then it's gone or glancing up and seeing someone with a clown nose on and then when they turn around it's gone like that is so creepy that was such a good setup so that's the one that I'm going to go with yeah i will agree with them though that the clown shoes were too much yeah because they mentioned the clown shoes leaving big goofy prints upstairs and it was too much so i will agree with them that the clown shoes were too much but I think that's the coolest setup. It's the best one. I Bear liked it when he opened the door the king. and the the, 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 the the clown birthday gram was there and it was like, nope. Yep, nope. Shut the door. Walk away. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm totally with you. Like, the parked car with the fish hook was... Mm, I don't know. It didn't have that atmospheric setup that the, cl- the, the pee pant clown did. However, the no. seance one was very, very good because if, it was. if Thea can be the storyteller... I think that will add That's to it. Right. Yeah, that was very good. That was so, very good. His, I'm going to pick the buzzing good. flies one because I think it was quite, I like the simplicity of it. A yeah. great story told by a great storyteller. Yeah. And then the slow build of the fly noise and the creeping. And So I quite like that, the, the, the buzzing fly seance. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Clearly, Thayer is the best one. Thayer would win all the fear tests. Well, he won because... the fear test. Because he was the only yeah. one who did win the fear test. Right. And it was his storytelling in the first one, in the warm-up one, that that really set the scene. So he's clearly the best one. Yeah. If he yeah. made it into the sequel, because he's still alive, if he makes it into the sequel, he has to plan the fear test. That gets the... Closes the, the, the villains in. Yeah. There's yeah. the fanfic. That's what's going to yeah. happen. Or is he going to be like Randy from Scream, who is the best one in all ways, and then he dies? Oh, I hope not. I hope mm. not. That was the sad. That was the worst thing for me with the Thea character was felt really prominent at the beginning, and then started to like quieting down. 
which made sense because he was trying to like he was kind of pulling back and not wanting to be part of what was going on but right yeah i really enjoyed that character like there yeah there was the best i don't know if we said our favorite character but clearly fair is our favorite character yeah yeah okay established. <laughs> next question established done <laughs> next question would you rather help plan a prank or witness a prank it depends which prank is it the pee pants prank I want to witness that one. <laughs> um, hmm. If it's the buzzing flies one, I wouldn't mind being part of that one because I felt like that one was probably the least harmful. Mm. Um, it wasn't directed at any one person. You know, it was just a general thing done to a general group of people. Um, yeah. I like was... that idea much better than scaring us like a targeted person. Yeah. So I'm going to say plan a prank, but I'm going to plan a a prank like the seance one where it doesn't have a target it's just kind of building in like you're at a you're at a halloween party and you're doing the prank for the halloween party for the guests they don't know what's going on they don't know if it's real or not so i'm going to say plan a prank like that i'm going to be very yeah. specific okay what about you i think i'm going to agree with you although it would be really funny to watch someone who's an asshole pee their pants oh yeah Oh, and yeah. again, like I said earlier, like seeing someone freaking out about seeing a girl in a clown nose, like that that would be pretty cool, but I think I would I would rather help plan. Because then I would make it to where it's not targeted at any one person, because I don't like that idea. No, taking away the harm. I, I would yeah. wear the health and safety vest and planning sessions and be like, no. Yeah, no, I can't do that. No, sorry. No. Last question. Okay. Would you rather go to a Halloween party dressed as Chucky, the psycho scene, Jason, Freddy Krueger, or Carrie? We're picking Carrie because the PJ whatever. That's a she's a non. I had a, a non because I couldn't remember. Right, that's like that's like a non event. Um, and when I, I get the, to be, can I point out? I love the fact that at the party, Thea's um, date was dressed as Bride of Chucky. Yes, and also that Thea's date was a boy yes. dressed as the Bride of Chucky, which is fantastic. I did love that scene. I love the cleverness of the psycho shower scene. Mm -hmm. I think that would be an excellent costume, but it would also be pretty cumbersome to carry around. Although you would keep people at a distance so that i mean that one is really good but i think i would probably just go with carrie for the fact that i'm covered in blood because i like to do that sort of thing yeah although i'd probably get cold and sticky and gross after a while yeah i always think with chucky the fine line was twi pulling the Chucky costume off and just looking like a weird clown. So it's a bit yeah. difficult one. Yeah, you're right about the psycho one. I was just kept thinking, she's going to get a draft. Yeah. Mm. And like, did she pin her towel on? Is it is it secured in any way? Because if not, if that was me walking around in a towel, my towel always falls off. Yeah. Yeah. Jason and Freddy are... Like for me, too easy costumes. They're the kind of costume where you like, uh, like people who don't like to get dressed up as can just yeah, put on. like it's... oh, there's or like you forgot about it. Shit, there's a party coming up. Who am I gonna be, Freddy? Yeah, you can pop into a like a shop on the way to yeah, the way to any the shop too. Any yeah. shop will have it. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm gonna go carry. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it in the prom dress with the blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, yeah. you do it right. Although now I want to say that I will be from the Rage Carry 2 because I like the Rage Carry 2 better. I'll be original Carry. You can be the Rage Carry 2. Okay, good. Sorted. We have a plan. Done. Done and done. Okay. Favorite final thought quotes? <laughs> Four. I have four today for you. Do you have four or do you have five? It looks like you have five. 
Five, oh yeah. Eh, uh, four or five, depending on if I read them all. Depending on which book you read. Depending on which book you read. If you read the US version, I've got four. If you read the UK version, I've got five. Okay, good. So, court number one. Like an apparition in a bathroom mirror, my mom appeared behind me. <laughs> That's a good one. Terrifying. I love it. Second quote is, I love that about horror. It's the only genre that aims to please while daring you to look away. Ooh. Ooh. And then the third one, obviously Rachel talking about herself, I'm afraid of myself. I'm afraid that I'm a monster. I think everybody has those doubts. Not necessarily stabbing a person to death. With scissors in a closet? Yes. 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 Okay, this is the bonus one on the UK if you didn't have it in the not in the US it's the clue ending quote no fear no mask Ooh. but I'm going to leave this one because it's it's, it's a fear quote okay the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making us forget he pissed himself in front of a clown before <laughs> oh, oh fear fear's the best yeah there is the best. What have you uh, got? I have... I have four this time. I'm going to save my Thayer one for last. Ooh, this first one. This first one that I'm going to share is my absolute favorite in every way, shape, or form because it is us. Who has crushes on authors? Oh, I feel so we attacked do. and seen. We do. And attacked <laughs> and seen. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. Okay. Life is about living in the moment. Yes. I like that one. We could be monsters together. I saw that one and I thought of us. Oh, I know. Me too. Yeah. Because it's true. Because we can be monsters together having crushes on authors. <laughs> and then finally, it happened in like the first three pages of the book. It was at the very, 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 I very, love very, it very, when very that happens because you know you're going to get a good book full of good quotes. <laughs> right? So this is Thayer telling, <laughs> telling the ghost story at the beginning. They were... Registered Republicans. <gasps> Armadillo! <laughs> Armadillo! How did neither of us have Armadillo on our list? I don't know. I don't know, but it's on there now. That's perfect. Armadillo has become our life today. <laughs> that is perfect. I love every single one of them. Right? So good. It's a great book. I really, really enjoyed this one. It yeah. was so much fun. Yeah, it, I think it's one of these where you can revisit it just to try and pick up all the, the references and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely you can. All right, if you liked this, try this. What do you have? No, I haven't read this one yet, um, but it's I haven't my... read mine yet either. Oh, okay. Because mine, mine's not out yet. Oh, okay. Mine came out last year, but it's been on my TBR list since... Um, Somebody recommended it on socials and it will have been an author who recommended it because if an author recommends it, it tends to go straight on my TBR list. Right. Um, and it's called Hide and Seek by Daka Harmon. The summary's from Goodreads. One of our most iconic childhood games receives a creepy twist as it becomes the gateway to a nightmare world. I went up the hill. The hill was muddy. Stomped my toe and made it bloody. Should I wash it? Justin knows that something is wrong with his best friend. Z went missing for a year, and when he came back, he was different. Nobody knows what happened to him. At Z's welcome home party, Justin and the neighbourhood crew play hide and seek. But it goes wrong. Very wrong. One by one, everyone who plays the game disappears, pulled into a world of nightmares come to life. Justin and his friends realise there's horrible places where Z have been trapped. All they can do now is hide from the seeker. Ooh. Games, Freddy Krueger vibes. Yes. Psychological, creepy ass children, stranger yes. things. Sounds like so much fun. It Sounds is. like we need to cover it eventually on the podcast. Yes. 
what right. is yours that is not released yet i'm excited it's not released yet it comes out next month it comes Ooh. out in july it's the final girl support group by grady hendrix nice nice and nice. as much as we loved horror store i'm excited for this one mm. Mm. the summary came from goodreads In horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll. The one who fought back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends. The one who emerges bloodied but victorious. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago, and it has defined every day of her life since. And she's not alone. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapist in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, putting their lives back together, piece by piece. That is, until one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again, piece by piece. But... The thing about these final girls is that they have each other now, and no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never, ever give up. I picked that one because obviously Rachel is a final girl, so... And Grady Hendrix is a good writer. And Grady Hendrix is good, so yeah, but it's not out yet. Mm, Interesting. I like the sound of both of our recommendations this week. I know. It's almost like we like horror stories. I know. Shock. As we open up our October schedule. (laughs) Very good. All right. That's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Necromancing the Stone by and with Lish McBride. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise. And become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. Armadillo! Armadillo! Jenga's my jam. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover. And on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you'd like this episode, check out our others. A rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening.